Interesting. So let's wait for things to catch up. It's been so cold without you. I'm not gonna lie. It looks like we might actually be that. Maybe we could try. We could try to figure out a way to put our past aside. I've realized I only wanted you. We shall see though. I hope it's not too late. <laughs> I want you back here with me. Oh, and let me get some things organized over here. It's better this way. Thought we were already organized, but apparently not. I'd rather be with you than someone I don't know. Alright, I think that that should be what we say the truth. Bring that down a little bit. See if that's a little bit better. Hopefully it is. Of course, I think the music might be just a touch loud. Let's try that. That should be a little bit better, I hope. All right. Okay, so we're going to try it like this and see how well it works. Oh, all right. <laughs> oh, so welcome back to Station Ears. Happy Friday, everybody. Hope you're having a fabulous day for the folks who may be in that wonderful, wonderful Australian time zone. Happy Saturday. <laughs> all right. So for the folks who have not been following over on the YouTube side of the house, oh, we had a little bit of a fiasco between last week and this week. Basically, the old base, um, yeah, the the panda died. Yes, I know, sad panda. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I've been doing is over the course of this week, um, I have been rebuilding what we had. So we're basically roughly back to where we were before. As you can see, slightly different build out this time, but you know. It always helps to uh, try and keep things in perspective, right? So, for those who have not really seen a whole lot of Station Years, basically what it is, is it is a based, a space-based survival game. Um, as the name implies, you are building more or, less, more or less bases instead of building ships. Uh, you can actually build ships in the game. We haven't gotten into that aspect of the game yet, but wanted to show you what we've done so far. Right now, we have gone ahead, you start with one of these uh, solar panels, and we went ahead, built a couple of more. We went out and gathered all the resources, obviously. And over the course of the time, we've gone ahead and wired in a couple of batteries. We've got these in series, not in parallel. Uh, or actually, we have them in parallel, not in series because they are part of the same grid, but they are not in line, so. All right, we've got all of our machines. Like I said, we basically just got back to where we were when we, uh, we died in the last playthrough. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna work on the filtration system, which was the reason why we died last time. That's <laughs> because I accidentally used that canister right there in uh, trying to pressurize a room long before we needed to be doing that. All right, so what I'm gonna do is walk you through what we've got going on, show you where we are, and then we'll get going with the build. So just go ahead and show you, this is going to be our filtration room and uh, gas room once it's done. We actually have an intake here that will process things through. And let me see here. So this pipe, so as you can see here, it loops up around, comes back up through this way, and it goes into that canister. What you don't see behind the scenes, actually, let me grab, we're gonna grab the wrench so I can show you really quickly. So what we have here is a failure to communicate. No. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right, so basically, you have the intake valve here, or the vent here, that will process gas up through this pipe. It'll head upstairs 
to the inlet or to the exhaust. Okay, that's the exhaust for the furnace. So both of these will feed into this line, which goes to that processor, which then goes anything that comes out, whatever we filter we put in there, will come in through here and end up in this canister. Everything that isn't filtered goes over to the next one. And let me show you really quick. So basically, all of that raw gas comes through this way, goes through this filter. One element is pulled out, everything else is passed to this one. Another element is pulled out and passes in, etc., etc. Now, one of the things that we need to deal with, actually, let's go here. Turn that on so you can see. Um, there are six items that you can pull out of any of the any of the gas lines, right? So you have oxygen, CO2, oh, what is everything? So you have volatiles, which are effectively hydrogen, water, CO2, nitrogen, pollutants, which are everything other than the things that you can see here, and then oxygen, right? So we're gonna have a filter for each one of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Just make sure I got my counting right because I don't always do this correctly. Okay, so, so we have one, two, three, four, that's five and six. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pipe in the last of these today and just show you what we're gonna do. So when you pick up the atmospherics, it'll give you an option to place either an air conditioner or a filter. And we're gonna do filters. So we'll just flip this thing around. And now I could actually plug this directly in line like that, but I want some room to have, I wanna have some room so I can get the, uh, the other pipes piped in here. So we're gonna go ahead and place this here. Pick up you. And I'm thinking I may actually run this one a little bit differently. Let's flip you around. And we will definitely show you how the filtration system works here. All right, and then what I'm thinking I'm gonna do with this one, let's see here, do we just wanna go, we're just gonna go right there with it. So this one's actually going to be our water filter. Now, the reason I have this one out on its own is so that one, I don't forget that that's what this is. And two, we're gonna take the unfiltered waste. Um, so as you can see here, you have your filtration output. This is what's ever filtered. Filtration waste is the stuff that's unfiltered. Because this is the last one in the line. In theory, everything should be filtered out of it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this pipe and run it all the way back. Uh, over into this process. So where we have that three-way connector right now, we're actually gonna make that a four-way connector. So what we'll do is we'll have a, uh, a vent shut off over here, so it'll come out, we'll have a pipe come out, we'll have a valve, and then we basically loop this back through. And I'm gonna put radiators in here um, to help, so in case we have a, a like, uh, if something comes through there and it's still too warm, Basically, we'll be able to cool off the air in order to, we'll cool off whatever gas is in the pipe in order to process it back through. Now, I did think about doing that and I may actually, you know what I might do? I might actually run this down back through a cooling loop and then back in. Because the gases that are gonna come out of the furnace are gonna be ridiculously warm and we don't want that coming, we don't want the overly hot gas into the line because it'll end up destroying the stuff because it basically increases the pressure in the line, so. All right, so let's see what we got here. So we need to grab, I'm gonna leave this plate here for right now because we don't need this, at least not in our inventory right this second. So you are regulator. We need a regulator. Where are we? There. Okay, so we're gonna use a regulator here. Let's flip this beast around. There you go. So we have one regulator there. And I'm not gonna worry about, let's go ahead and drop you. Um, 
Okay. Whew, thought I dropped it and it disappeared. So I'm not going to worry too much about having a regulator on the water line for pressure because we're not really worried about how much pressure is coming off of it at that point. Um, but what we do want to have is we do want basically to be able to collect the water, which is where this tank comes in and this base comes in. We're basically going to wire this piece in over here. So we'll have the filtered output come through here. We'll have a tank attached to it. And we're just going to collect the water as it comes out. In fact, let's go ahead and we're going to do that now. So we want that to go there. So we want you... How, how much are you going to block? I'm going to put you there. Alright, now uh, you can pick these things up. You have to find the portable handle thing. What you want to do is you just come over, place this down on it, just hit Q to drop whatever's in your hand, and then you bring out your wrench and you can actually attach this to the base. So now we have it fully attached, clamped down, ready to go. All right, and now from here, we're just gonna run the piping. So let's go ahead and switch over. So we're gonna go one, let's go. There you go. And then all we're gonna do, like I said, is we're just basically running it into that line. And I, uh, you know what, I'm gonna have to take Ah, uh, see? All right. So let's grab that wrench back out again. All right. So what we're going to do here is just go ahead and do that. Like so, and like so. Okay. So now when it, the water, or when everything comes through filtration, that's going to be our water filter that's going to come through. We'll have water pressurizing in that. And I'm going to need to make quite a few more pipes, I think. So you already piped in, you are not. So yeah, we're going to need five, ten, probably another 20 pipes. Let's go ahead and go grab those really quick. Okay, so we should have everything we need for pipes. What I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab twenty of these things. All right, we're just gonna let this run for a couple of seconds. So hopefully, everybody's having a fabulous day. Now we do have the um, solar panel set up following this computer and what basically what the computer does is it allows us to automate the tracking so we don't have to worry about it. Um, it's not as efficient as it could be. And pull that off. But that's okay. It, it doesn't have to be perfect efficiency every time all the time. Kind of. So let's go like that. And we're going to swing this around. Okay. So again, this is taking the leftover exhaust, pushing it through this one. We're going to have you come down here. Let's go ahead and flip you around. See if we can get this to line up here. You around, flip you around. All right, gets easier once you once you've gotten things running. All right, so we're gonna go uh, this way, and I need to bring it over one. Now I do need to be careful. I don't want to have a turn here because this is that cable won't go through uh, bends, but it will go through straight pipes. So I need to go ahead and do that really quick. Go like so. 
what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get these in. And then I think I might need, oh, I've got some cable in there. We'll figure it out when we need to, right? right so let's go, no, not three-way junction. Not that it really matters all that much. All right. We can make it work. Now the pipes are sealed by default. So you don't have to, you don't generally have to worry too much about, you know, if you don't have a, uh, a, a connector on the pipe, it's not like it's the end of the world. It's not gonna bleed out in the space or anything. Short by one pipe. <laughs> Son of a. All right, let's go. Let's go make that last pipe really quick. And like I said, we're not worried too much about what's coming through the pipe at this point, because by the time it gets there, that should only be water hitting that one. Um, and I'll show you how you can check that here in a moment. I want to go grab the power cable so that we can get all of this wired in. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that each of these types of shapes uh, require a certain number of materials. So if you have one pipe, you can run either straight or turns. But if you want to have junctions, depending on the number of connections on that junction, uh, like if you do a T junction, it takes two pipes worth of material to make that one junction. Uh, so if you're trying to keep this efficient, like this bend turned here, um, I think was either two or three pipes. The T shape is two pipes and then anything more than that is uh, three or four. So, and then the, tr the same is true for the wiring. So all of these connectors where you see these odd like corners and pieces, those are all things that require at least two wires in order to build. So you definitely want to keep that in mind when you're building this stuff. And then we're going to do this. And what I've been doing is basically I've been building this in so that we actually have the data line in here in case we ever want to use it. Um, once we get all of this set up and we get a little bit more comfortable with where we are as resource wise, the plan is that we will actually start using some of the, uh, the data systems. And of course, I need to make one more wire. Son of a. <laughs> we keep one short. Always one short. Hey, Sharky, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to the stream. And you are already set up for cable coil. I just need to grab the copper out of here. There it is. So I've been doing a lot of mining off camera just so we could have the resources, so I wouldn't have to go do any mining tonight, hopefully. So if anything blows up, then, well, you know. Okay, we're only gonna worry about one of those right now because we don't really need more than that. And I wanna turn off my helmet. There you go. Okay, so these are all now wired in. They are now piped in. And I think we have everything we need in here, right? Let's take a look. So we have canisters, we have containers for the canisters. So this particular one actually feeds back into the, uh, show you here. So that particular can, the one towards the floor, feeds back into this area. Now the reason I've done that is so that as we burn materials and we capture the gases coming out of there, and we run those gases through the filtration system, We'll be able to take the tanks that are in these uh, these pipelines, and we're gonna have this gas mis mixer set up probably over here somewhere. Um, and what we'll be able to do is to change mixes in the gases that we're capturing, so that way we can take the tank that's full, and we'll basically be able to put that in here and use that for fueling the uh, the furnace. And then the furnace actually has a data jack on it too that we probably won't use, but you never know. So you're all piped in, you're piped in. 
Alright, so now we can go ahead and start patching in the walls. Let's pick you up. Uh, I think I have iron plates over here. Iron sheets, there we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to weld these up. Now, one of the other reasons why I went ahead and used that junction instead of a corner there is so that my voice is a bit quiet. Interesting. Hmm, let me see here. Is that better? Yeah, there was, I had a Windows update come through that I couldn't avoid, and I think it reset some of my uh, my mic information stuff again. But yeah, let me know. Let me know if that's better, man. <clears throat> so for now, let's go ahead and load this up. Now you want to be careful where you're pointing this. If you point it towards a pipe or towards one of those electrical cables and you uh, start welding, you can actually cut the, the wires and such. All right, so is that it? Everything's, everything in here looks like it is piped in. Look like we should be good to go. I am tempted to actually remove some of this stuff uh, maybe the ones on the back wall here and put some windows in like this but I'm trying to keep this area a little bit more under environmental control because even though this door will make an airtight seal this is not a room that I'm expecting to be pressurized often the only time we're really going to be using it as a uh, pressured area is when we're feeding gases in like uh, if we're feeding in like uh, volatiles and stuff into the vent So we're going to need a bunch of cable, too. I forgot we are going to need more wiring in here. Also need to break out the... Let's grab that really quick. That was why I had one pipe too short. All right. And with the last regulator, I forgot to put the regulator on this one. And like I said, the reason we're not putting a regulator on the water line is I'm not really worried about the water line, honestly. There we go. Now, when you're placing regulators, you do have an option for a regulator or a back pressure regulator. So the difference between them is that the back pressure regulator um, doesn't allow the blowback on the doesn't allow the blowback on the pressure, where the regular pressure regulator is trying to force the air in. Very oversimplified explanation and probably a little bit incorrect because of the way it was explained, but you know. It works as it is. Hang on. And then I think we're going to put another light in over here, maybe. So they recently increased the brightness of these and the radius of the light. So now it lights up a little bit. It lights up a little bit more. So, so let me see. Do we have... Well, Sharky, you'll, you'll enjoy this or you'll appreciate this. Because you have to use specific tools to do specific things in this game. <laughs> so if you want to cut the wire, you can't use the wrench or anything else. You actually have to use the wire cutters. To which you then go boop. Alright, and we're going to need one. So I need one, two, three, four, five six that's 12 wires just for that so we're gonna need probably four. one two three four five at four so it's another 20 plus 12 is 32 so let's go ahead and make like 40 of these things and just get them knocked out And then while we're doing that, I'm going to come over here. We're going to yeah, let's drop you right there from this right this second. We're going to grab our welder again. We're going to 
weld that up so that it's done. Let's go ahead and turn that off, put it away. Now, you do want to be careful when you're using the welder. Um, because you are in deep space, it does not radiate heat well. So what will end up happening is you can end up blowing up canisters if you leave uh, the regular canisters like the ones you saw on the wall if those are pressurized and you leave them out the heat from the radiation from the solar radiation will heat the canisters up and if the pr internal pressure gets too high it will blow up the canisters fun stuff now the big thing about this game that I really like is that it has it also supports multiplayer and I haven't really done anything in the multiplayer yet I have been talking to a few folks to see if they're interested in doing something with it um, and as soon as I know I'll let everybody else know maybe we'll do the drunken stream with this game I think it'd be kind of funny to have you know four or five people running around in this game being able to set each other on fire so <laughs> So we're going to have a bit of time on this before it finishes up. But while we're waiting, we can go ahead and get started on these. So what we're going to do is we're going to do that junction that we were talking about before. There you go. So we're going to do that. And then I'm going to have this actually come out into a turn. We're going to flip this again. And what I need to do is we're going to go ahead and drop this right now. We need to break out our crowbar again. And we're going to take up the flooring that we've placed. And then this way it just makes it a little easier to get cabling and everything uh, done. All right, so we're going to go from here. We're going to bring you down. So we're just going to get all of these in really quickly. And should be able to get you there. And then there is a three-way corner. Sounds dirty, doesn't it? All right, and we're going to put the three-way corner in here. And that basically allows me to have a little bit more power in here if I need to run like another light or something down here. Can I get... Oh, you know what? I'm not going to be able to use that there because we've got that. All right. Now, before I go any further, let's go check, see how much cable we have. Wow, we got a lot of cable. Okay, come on. Let me, let me, oh, you son of a. <laughs> that might be a little too much cable. Well, let's see here. How much do we have here? Yeah, that's going to be more than enough, I think. Hey, exactly 20. Nice. That actually worked out. Look at that. Well, you can electrocute each other. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff you can do in this game. So what we're going to do is we're going to say just a regular corner there. And we're going to do a regular corner there. Regular corner there. And this is all because of the fact that we can't wire cabling past that turn, but you can run it past the straight sections. So if you're doing piping and you forget to leave room for your cable, just remember that the um, straight cable, I'll show you here, the straight cable can share a spot with the, the pipe, but you can't share a spot with the, with the uh, bends. It has to be a straight piece. So as long as you keep that going, you're fine. So we're just going to go ahead and put the straight sections in. Now once we get these in, what we'll have is a, uh, we'll come back and put the, put those in. There we go. Alright, and then those in as you can see we're losing cable very quickly at this point because now we're using two cables for these and we have one cable left over that's good okay so we're gonna pick up all the grading now 
Did I leave? I think I have another piece of floor grating. All right, and just to make sure that we actually have power. Okay, so that's good. Turn this on. Yes, okay, so they are all actually wired in, just making sure. I have been known to uh, misplace some of my things when I'm, when I'm building this stuff, so it's always good to make sure you have it set up right. We're going to flip you around like so. And basically what we're doing is we're making this a little easier to walk around in here. Hopefully making this easier to walk around in here. Um, actually, you know what? I want these to go the other way. How did I get those other ones in that direction? What the hell? There we go. Alright. And having that last set, yeah, screw it. It's fine. Hey Shades, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. Happy uh, Friday. And I should have, I think I have two more of those grates in here somewhere. Uh, let's see here. Deep Space Panda this evening. So, did I turn that on? Wall kits, floor grating, there we are. I thought I had more. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and get these going. And so now we have this nice, easy to walk on f surface that's going to irritate the OCD in the uh, in the audience. So, okay. <laughs> Air conditioning, our portable oxygen tank. And what I'm gonna do for one of these, I want oxygen to come off of one of these. And it may be this one. Because what I need to do is I need to uh, go through and put in all the filters and we're going to get ready to do that here in a second. But I'm going to go ahead and get some of this stuff done. There we go. I'll probably run another light down here around the corner as well. Maybe put it up on this back wall over here. Right. But for now, it works. And we want the water filter to be the last one in the line. So we're going to grab water and then let's go, I don't know, where do we want oxygen? Because I think CO2 is going to be the first thing I scrub. So I'm thinking, actually, you know what? Maybe we'll do oxygen here. Do oxygen, nitrogen, and CO2 if we do it that way. Yeah, let's do it that way. Because we know water is going to be the last one. So we want oxygen. Oxygen and nitrogen will be the first two. And we can turn that on. that on. Now each of those kits can actually filter two materials out of the gas line. Um, so if you wanted to have oxygen and nitrogen say you know come out of one line so basically you end up with breathable atmosphere without mixing. Um, I'm not an over an over uh, enthused by doing that. I want, let's pull the volatiles out. Uh, mainly because of the fact that it means that if I ever want to use them, I have to run through another process. Uh, let's see, CO2. And volatiles, we can go ahead and turn both of those on. And we have pollutant and water. All right. So go ahead and get these in here. All 
And then, like we said, we want water to be our last one in the line. Now, it doesn't matter which slot you put these into. Or it shouldn't matter what slot you put these into. Why are you flashing an error? Everybody else is okay, right? Yeah. Oh, is it because I don't have an outlet for you? Hmm. All right, let's turn the light on so you can see what's going on here. Okay, so I'm thinking that because I don't have anything piped in here, is it's giving me an error. All right, so what we're going to do... Damn you, realistic jetpacks. All right. Let me turn that off for now. Uh, do we have a pipe? Did we have a leftover pipe? I thought we had one. Yes, we did. Now I'm curious if this will work. <laughs> this might not work. It might work. I'm not sure. All right, so what we're going to do... Are you not going to... Yep. That's all it cared about. Okay. Don't ask me why. We're just going to let that go. Okay. So what I've got going on here... For those who are just joining us, we are setting up an air filtration system, or I should say a gas filtration system. Basically, we have two ways of getting gas into the system. Technically, three ways if we count this one. So one thing I can do is come in here with different types of ice, because we have volatile and um, contaminated ice. You can drop those in here, or just regular ice. Turn this whole system on, and what it'll do is it'll pull the gases that are released from the ice melting into the system. Um, this valve actually is for this feed. We don't want it to go there. So what's going on is at this corner, it's actually passing straight back. Um, it ties into the system that's coming out of our furnace upstairs. So both of those will feed gas here past this line. We're going to go ahead and turn that valve on. Um, that feeds into here. And then this will pull out oxygen. This will pull out our nitrogen, our CO2, general pollutants. Uh, everything else and then water so okay that's in theory how it works now how we can check to make sure it is actually working let's go ahead and grab you switch you over we want you to be atmo analyzer so we're gonna go ahead here we're gonna say like so and we'll turn this thing on okay so, as you can see, we're in the world, no, no gases present, right? So if you look at the pipe sections, it'll tell you no gases present. Now, when there is a gas in there, it'll tell you what it is, how many moles of it you have, and what the temperature of that gas is. So like right here, you can see on this side, we're seeing two pascals. Um, it would help a lot if we could redo the way that our hands work in the game. It used to be that this thing would always be up. But as you can see, we've got a bunch of CO2 in there. We've got a bunch of components. We've got a bunch of just miscellaneous crap in the line. Because we had been, we had been working with this. So there's nothing in there, but you do have it. So what about, interesting. So yeah, we do have gas in there. We have CO2 and we have uh, not. So if we pull this out, we're going to leave this closed because we don't want the uh, furnace to push anything into the pipe network right now. Go ahead and turn that off. Switch your hands so that we can see. All right, so CO2 should be this one. All right, so as you can see, there's nothing in there. We're going to turn that on. We're going to set our... I'm gonna set this up to, I wanna say, let's say 6K. And the reason we want this set, and we're gonna do, actually, you know what, let's do it 5K on all of them. Uh, but basically what that'll do is it'll let us get 5,000 5, pascals of pressure on the gas. Um, so basically it'll help pull the gas out of the pipe. And we want to do this. 
not too worried about it. So how's everybody doing tonight? You having a good weekend so far? Turn you on. Decrease you to zero. That way we don't have to do the... There we go. Alright. That way I don't have to go back and, you know, do the sub-clicks as much. And turn this off while we're we're doing this because it's we don't want to burn the battery on it if we don't need to so you're running you're running and eventually i will come in and i'll put a switch in that basically will control all of these you are set for five thousand you are turned on five thousand five all right no i missed one hate work but love your job huh that's always a good thing you know the uh, what is it the old um the old customer service complaint my job would be awesome if it wasn't for the customers. All right. And eventually, like I said, we we're, we're going to have the oxygen line here. We're going to have another uh, ca another pipeline that will run over here, tie into this base, and we'll actually have the oxygen tank sitting on it. So we'll be able to refill our oxygen tank a little bit easier. All right. So we want to check the line one more time just to make sure. So as you can see, nothing here, nothing here, right? Nothing in there because it would tell you if it was. All right. So now we're going to try turning this stuff on for the first time and see what happens. Let's see here. You are all turned on. I might need to run a... Let's see here. Nothing there. Hey, look at that. We've got nitrogen. We've got our CO2. So why are you not going into the canister? Are you going into the canister and I'm just not seeing it? Yeah, so there it is. Okay, so we do have... 404, five, okay. So what the regulators, what's this doing is it's basically pulling the gas out that we need. Are you gonna show me? It's kind of interesting that the gas canister doesn't show you what's in it when you're looking at the analyzer because the analyzers are used to show you tank uh, content as well. Interesting. All right, well, good to know. And what we're going to do is, do we have an extra slot in here? We do. Can I get you in there? I can. Perfect. Look at that. Okay, so we have a working filtration system. Ugh. Now, what we're going to do is, actually, I want to take you out of there. Can we put you back in here? Because what I want to do is I'm going to take this belt off. That belt away. You are silicon. Okay. We're going to close this door. As you can see, everything is running. We're going to put the belt on. Now, we have oxide ice and we have volatile ice. If we move this into our hand while the sun is up, um, it'll melt. Or it should melt. Are you going to melt? Of course, now see, see, having said that, <laughs> are you serious? <sighs> oh, so the stuff used to melt in your hand, but apparently it doesn't melt anymore. Is this because the room is not heated? I may need to actually do heat in here. Hmm. Doesn't that figure? All right, so let's go ahead and turn that off right now. <sighs> Ooh. 
so fun to make you subwoofer active. Oh, right on. Congrats, buddy. Alright, so let's grab that really quick. I don't think I need any of the ores. No. Okay, we should be okay. <sighs> Alright, let's see if we can make a, a heater. I don't remember which one of these. Is it you? I don't think so. I think you are... There should be a wall heater that we're looking for. So these different cartridges that you're seeing um, on the printer, these are what you put into the um, into the little e-reader thing in order to change the functions of the e-reader. Now the construction kits will allow you to build different things like sensors and such. Data disk is basically what you need in order to program anything in the game. Batteries, computers, fabricators, lights. Power controller. Okay. I'm wondering if I need the fabricator to make the... Uh, because I, I might need yeah I might need the uh, uh, crap I don't want to set up the fabricator uh, looks like I might have to set up the fabricator I was really hoping that we wouldn't have to set those up Furnace, auto lathe, centrifuge door. Holy crap. Looks like we might have to set up the. Uh... Alright, what do we need for this thing? Iron, gold, and copper. Copper. I think the iron was already in there. Right? No? So where did the iron go? Oh, it's in there. Turned it off before it was all done. Okay, let's go ahead and grab the iron. We're going to throw that in here. Now, the reason I didn't want to set up the fabricator is because I basically have to set up a second computer for that thing. And then we have to build a uh, motherboard for it, too. So let's go ahead and turn these off because we don't need these running if we're not actually processing gas through here. And this is one of the reasons why I was saying I'm going to set these up with switches. Come on. So I can have all of the, I can have a switch run all of these things at once. So basically I can just turn it all on and off from one, spit, one location. And what I'll do is I'll come through and rename them so that when we look at them, we'll know which gas is being processed by it. I need to turn off the stuff inside. So, uh, what do y'all think about the? Let me, uh, what do you think about the game so far? Do you guys like it? Don't like it? And we still need to do the gas mis mixer as well. Ah. This thing's going to take forever to print. So basically what I'm doing is I'm turning down power um, so that we can... Because see, what what's going on is these things have small batteries in them that are being fed by these larger batteries. And I'm thinking we need... Let's go 1300. Let's do that.
So basically, the more wattage you allow this to go through the line, uh, if you look over here, you see how it's going much faster now? Um, basically, it depends on how much wattage you have going through the line. So the more wattage you have coming out of there, the faster these are going to drop, obviously. But the faster some of the electronics and stuff can be made. Oh, it's definitely something. Um, this is really just kind of a, st a temporary stopgap. Once we have a little bit more time, what I'm going to end up doing is basically coming back through here and uh, cleaning all of this up. The problem that we have is that you can't pick the batteries up without losing the charge. And I don't want to have a situation where, you know, we basically have two completely full batteries and uh, lose all of that power if we don't have something in place. So. But when you start, you only have like 30 of these frames, uh, enough materials for one of these panels, these two machines, this furnace, you actually start with the furnace and you start with the, uh, the, the auto wave. You have to make the electronics, you have to make this, you have to make all of this other stuff. So it just takes time to gather everything. I'm actually going to increase the number of batteries that I have. Because what I want to do is I want to create an actual solar farm. Um, and in order to do that, basically what I want to do is move most of this out one block or maybe two blocks. And then just have, you know, solar panels going both directions. Like uh, probably ten or so. And then have probably like five batteries or so. Uh, because eventually we're going to have to build an actual base. Um, and when I go to do that, we're going to be going subterranean for it so that we can control temperature a little bit easier. <laughs> Almost done. Yay, fabricator. Okay. Now, the reason I'll show you why I didn't want to build this thing. That's why. See, look how big this thing is. So in order for us to use this, you also have to have a computer. And the computer is dedicated to this particular device. Uh, so I'm thinking. And the thing is, is that this thing actually puts out like uh, gases and things that I would like to be able to recapture. But you see how we, we're kind of out of room around here? So what I originally thought I was going to do, let's go ahead and put that away, is to take everything out of this cabinet, move the cabinet, and we put the fabricator here, and then we'll put another uh, frame in that we'll put the computer on, and then basically run the power basically from here, run it out, and then uh, have it set up so that just the fabricator was on its own line right here. And I'm thinking we might actually go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and move these things out. Come on. Now I don't want to lose these because these are actual supplies that I still need. The containers over there are empty, which is why they're over there. Uh, let's see, I think I have a frame or two left in here, right? Iron wall, iron sheets, glass sheets. Ah, crap, I thought I had a, I thought I had a frame left. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn you off. Actually, we want a computer. I figure we're here, we have the resources loaded. Let's go ahead and build the stuff that we need. Alright, so we're going to drop you, drop you, and now I need a motherboard, oh, logic processor, I need, it's a fabricator, I think, what it's called, motherboard logic, manufacturing, there you go, wrong button. <laughs> And 
And what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to go ahead and splice these into the network. Um, because the computer, the manufacturing board, will actually let you see all of these devices. Or it's supposed to let you see all the devices. We'll see. Okay. So we want... You to go there. You guys up. Can I get away with putting either of you in here? I can. Awesome. Okay. Nice to have pockets. And we wanted to go ahead and turn you on. Eject the materials. Thank you. We're going to grab... All I really need is the iron. Wow, we have gone through a lot of iron. I started this evening with about 200 grams of iron. Right. Oh, no, I need... No, I don't want steel frames. I want iron frames. Our iron frames are going to be right there. We're going to pump out one of these. I don't need... I just need one. Nice catch. There we go. And then when you have it as your active item, you just right click. Hold, uh, click and hold left click and you'll get that. Now I do need the metal sheets. Since I have sheets, go ahead and grab our welder. Switch over to our free hand here. We just want to go up one. We're going to put the iron sheets back. Actually, I should go ahead and take all the stuff out to move the locker. Maybe I'll move the locker over into the room over there. Because we're going to do gas stuff in here. So that's already tied in. Okay. Let's grab you. Do, 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 do. Right. Now, you start the game with the portable air conditioner, an air scrubber, and oxygen tank. This is where your um, resupply oxygen's at until you run out of it. And you, then you start needing to use these things. Which is why I was more interested in trying to get everything set up the first time and get it ready. So by the time we're, we're out of oxygen here, we'll have this going and we should have enough oxygen to keep us going. So. Alright, so we got that. So I'm thinking... Let's see, this is our oxygen. This is the actual O2 can. So I'm thinking that's going to get piped in here. In fact, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and figure out how we want this. Uh, so you're going that way. So if we go, let's bring it over one, maybe. Where are you at? So you're gonna be there. So let's go ahead and drop you there. Need to break out our wrench. We're going to connect this up. And let me guess. Oh, okay. So we can actually get... Now, I'm kind of curious here. Let me grab you really quick. Oh, see if it's tied into it, we can't use it, huh? All right. That's fine. That's fine. It gets two items out of the way. That's that's fine. And then I'm thinking tool locker there, maybe. Actually, where's the power on this thing? Power's on that side. So if we go here. So if we do that. Put one there. There we go. So I've learned to run and tell you once again, and you know that it's true. And this way we know how much room we need. There we go. 
So that actually needs to be up one. You know what? How about that? So I need one, two, three pieces of pipe. Don't need any more of these. Don't need any more of those either. There we go. Okay, so I need three pieces of pipe, and then that means we can put our toolbox or our uh, locker there. Okay. See, nice and simple, right? Welcome to Inventory Manager 2017. Well, 2018, I guess, would be better at this point. So we're just going to pile crap up right here for now. Get it all out of our inventory. And we have extra cable, so we can just drop that. Now that second type of cable that you see here, the one with the yellow and black one, that's actually the heavy cable. Uh, this particular type of cable has a potential of 5 kilowatts. That has a potential of something like five megawatts or some uh, something. Maybe that's five megawatts, and that's I don't remember. I don't remember. It's all starting to bleed together now. <laughs> Which one are you? Oh, you're salt. Okay, you're the salt generator. We're not even using you yet. There you go. Okay, airlocks. We probably we might get to the airlocks tonight, depending on how everything goes. You are going to go in there. That's an extra furnace that I, pr I printed off by accident. That was why I had to go get more materials, is because I uh, I did a boo-boo. I printed off more material than I needed for something, so. Uh, you, you were just going to drop over here. Drop you that way. Drop you, glass sheets, data disk, airlock control, and water. And I'll show you why I wanted to get all that stuff out of there because let's go over here. We're gonna we're gonna drop the the little things where we can get to them easily. Right. So now if I come back over here, I grab this and I grab the drill. I believe it is. You can deconstruct it, and it drops anything that's inside, so. All right, so let's go get this put away first. Uh, do I want, where are you at? You are there, so. We'll put you there. There you go. Perfect. No worries, Shades. <laughs> I know it's not the uh, the most exciting game to watch, but thanks for stopping in. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We will see you when you get back here next time. Have a great weekend. You are really far out of that wall. All right, let's go. See, it's like, that's just way too far out from the wall. Oh well, that works. And now we can start moving stuff back in here. This is one of the reasons I'd like to I would really like to try this game in multiplayer. <laughs> Standing alone, yeah. Yes, yeah, Sharky, I, I feel horrible about that. <laughs> so all of this is out of here now. Okay. We're gonna need that's gonna stay out, because we're gonna need that. Now the rest of this stuff, we're gonna go ahead and put away. Cause this is the. Oh, 
This is all the airlock construction stuff. Well, some of it's the airlock construction stuff. Some of it's just the rest of the crap that we've got sitting around. Right, so let's grab that. I think that's most of the miscellaneous crap. Now we do have the added benefit of being able to pick up some of this other stuff as well. It is really a shame that I can't put the uh, those things in here. So we have you. Okay, so we're going to use those two things here in a moment. I just want to make sure we've gotten all of the miscellaneous crap up off the floor. Okay, looks like it. All right. Uh, you can go over there since you are plumbing. So we want the computer. We want the fabricator. This is actually going to go back in here because I need the wiring. I'm actually going to need to make more wiring too. Okay, so what we're talking about doing here is we want the computer. We're going to set the computer over here. All right. Okay, so we have data coming out of there. We want power coming over here. Let's go ahead and put this in here for right now. Let's get just going to clean this stuff up here for a second. I'm going to have to pull some of that back out to get the wiring. All right, so now we have that. Let's go ahead and grab this. So we're going to replace this with a junction, we're going to replace that with a junction, and we're going to wire straight across, except, well, for some of this. <laughs> You'll see here in a minute. All right, so you are empty, you have iron, I don't need the iron, I need copper, which we just put in here. And that would be the copper, thank you. Actually, we're going to grab regular cable coil. Adventus, how you doing? Welcome to the stream. Okay, so this game is Stationeers. Basically, you are trying to survive in space. You get left on a moon, a random moon, not necessarily the Earth moon. You are given limited supplies, and you basically have to build a, uh, a survivable base. We have so far established our power system, which is based on solar. We've got a couple of batteries. We've got some transformers to step down the amperage from, or the wattage in this case, from the batteries into stuff that we can use elsewhere in the system. We have a furnace, an auto lathe. Yes, it's a rudimentary auto lathe. <laughs> the electro print, this is basically a circuit printer. And then the uh, pipe bender, which is where you get all of your hydraulic and get basically the gas based stuff. And then this little beast we just finished building is the fabricator, and we're getting ready to start wiring that in. Now, in order to do that, I need cable. So, need a little bit of it. I think we, I think ten should be enough to do it. We'll go fifteen just in case. But yeah, welcome to the stream. Hopefully, you're having a fabulous week. And that should be fifteen. Yep. Yeah, okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to break out our wire cutters. We're going to switch that over so that we... Uh, so we're going to take that out. We're going to take that out. And now we're going to replace those. And so what we're doing here is we're wiring in the, uh, the data system. 
Now, the fun thing about this is, is that your data and power can actually, like here, um, you can have data and power wired all the way through the same blocks here and not be an issue. In later areas or in specific cases, say like the solar panels, you don't want to do that because you can short stuff out. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually, I'm going to see if we can, can we get, I don't think we can, yeah, so we'll have to use the junction here, so, okay, that's what I thought. And if we have to use a junction, we may as well just go ahead and do this. It makes it a little easier. And we're going to go... Nope. We're actually going to have to do this. Alright. Okay. Did not need that there. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's been a long day. There we go. I just get... You know, I get happy just doing some of this stuff and it's like oh yeah I don't didn't actually need to do that there did I right. come over here we're feeding the device here alright so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab this put this out Hey, look at that. We have wires. We have lighting back there again. Okay. And yeah, you'll see me do a lot of these like little patchwork things like this. All right, so let's head back over here because I need to make a bit more wire. What do we need? We need one, two, three, four, uh, like seven, six, something like that. So we're just going to let that run. Oh, the music's distracting. <laughs> well, it's kind of intentional. That way you don't have to listen to me all the time. That should be enough. Because uh, when, I, when I start building, I sometimes get very quiet. And this way you have something to listen to. When, We're gonna go ahead and do this. Come on. Oh. Starting to get chunky. There we go. Alright, there we go. Uh, let me see if I can turn it down a little bit more. I've got it turned down pretty far, so. How's that? I try to keep it at least a little bit of music there just to make it for background purposes. Because the when these when these streams are done. Yeah, so when these streams are done I uh, I upload them over on the YouTube side of the house, so it's always nice to have a little bit of background music going on in there. Okay, so now that this is set up, I'm gonna open that up. As you can see, there's no motherboard, so I need to go grab that motherboard that we made that I put it in my pocket I did it's always nice when we put stuff in our pockets so we're gonna place that there we can go ahead and close that now when we turn this thing on it can see the fabricator yay so this is good because what this means is that we can go here let's uh, close that we'll get up here nice and close so you can actually see it so what you can do is this thing is going to see everything on the same network, all right? Um, this is all the things that you can make in the fabricator. Now you don't want to use the fabricator for making a lot of this stuff, mainly because of the fact that um, the dedicated devices often will make it make the same item for less resources. The thing is, is that the convenience of the fabricator is that you can say, "I want this item and this many of them." So. Well, that particular one was in my backpack, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can put the entire fabricator in my back, in my pocket, so. 
Oh, let's see here. We want. Oh, look. Yeah, engines. Okay. So once you have the fabricator, um, as you can see, there's gyroscopes and engines and stuff in here. You can actually make vehicles. Um, I have not made one yet. And I don't think I'm going to make one tonight. But I'll probably make one in the next week or two. Uh, the sleeper is basically your storage. Like, um, it's a place for people to log out in multiplayer. You don't really need it in single player. Suit storage is something where you can keep an extra suit. So if you happen to tear your suit, which is a thing in this game, which is why we have duct tape. Turret. That's new. I haven't seen that one before. Uh, microwave. There is cooking in the game, but there's no food consumption requirements yet. So I'm not going to worry about that for right now. Pickaxe. Uh, let's see. Pipe radiators are always a nice thing to have. Yeah, power connector. Regent processor. Interesting. All right. So let's see here. What do we say we needed? We needed a wall heater. And we just want one of those. So we're going to go ahead. Let's turn. This thing actually has... What do you have in there? You have nothing in there, so we're going to eject all of our materials from all of our machines really quick. And turn it off. So basically what this is, we're, we're manually feeding the resources in. Um, eventually we'll get to the point where we'll have the supply system set up where it will kind of push materials around for us. Uh, but for now, this works, so, okay. Do you have material? Yes, you have copper. And I know we're going to need copper, and you have iron, which is always good to go ahead and get more of that. Drop the iron in here. So if you are familiar with your chemical processes, um, you can actually make steel, you can make electrum, and there's a couple of other things that you can make that you basically have to know the uh, the pressures and temperatures that you need to do it. So we're picking that up. We did not need the data disk. You know what? We're going to just put, let's swap you out for the data disk. There we go. That's better. Okay, so we should have the material we need for this. Now, if you don't have the material, you'll it'll basically not process until you do have the material. Make sure we still have wall heater there. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and run that, and that basically tells you where your progress is, tells you how much of material it's going to take, and if you look in here, you can actually see it being made, and eventually it'll spit it out when it's done. So there you go. Wall heater. We can turn that off because that thing kills power quickly. So yeah, we have a working fabricator. Yes, duct tape is the magic of the universe. It is the force of the real world. It has a light side, a dark side, and it binds the pieces of the universe together. All right, so we have a wall heater. We're going to place this uh, oh, <laughs> can I actually get, this is probably a bad idea, putting a uh, wall heater next to a storage tank. Let's, um, not do that. <laughs> uh, we can put it here, though. So we'll put that there. Let's grab our wire cutters really quick. Do a quick cut. And we're going to do that. There we go. We can put our wire cutters back now. We have one coil of wire left. So, uh, yeah. You are airlock controls. We have not gotten to airlock yet. So, okay. So now all of that is done. Let's go grab. So all of this believe it or not, was so that we could do this. 
All right, so we swapped out our belts. We now have our mining belt on. We're going to close this. We need to turn this on. Let's see if we can get the stuff to melt in here now. Doesn't look like it's going to. Are you serious? Really? <sighs> Son of a... <laughs> oh, okay. So they have uh, defeated us. Basically, what we're trying to do is when you have the sun out like this, if you drop stuff into your inventory, I'll show you really quick. You see how it's melting? Yeah, it should be doing that in here, but it's not. And I don't know why. Because I have a feeling that if I do this, ah, uh, see? So it's because I'm in the shade. Oh, see, they changed it. It used to be that even if you were inside, as long as you were above ground, um, you could melt the ice like that. But now, you can't do that. So I'm guessing what I'm going to need to do is to actually... Well, crap. Okay. Oh, well. That's why I do it first, so everybody else can learn from it. And you are mostly overhead. I wonder if we put in a wall. Uh, let's see. Let's turn you on. Turn you on. We're going to look for a wall kit really quick. So we're looking for a kit. Walls. We just need one. Now, the reason you want this and not the iron wall or steel wall is because these allow you to actually make a uh, window. In order to make the window, I have to grab this kit really quick and I will show you. So when you go to place it, you have three options. You have a composite wall, you have a railing, and you have a composite window. The composite window is what we want. Yeah, this game's got a lot of detail into it. Um, in some cases, uh, annoyingly so. And the developers are constantly working on the game. So like here, in order to take this, you know, in order to do this, I have to take this block out. Well, now that I've gotten it back down, I have to grind the last portion of the block out to get the frame. So we're going to do this. We're going to go like so. We're going to put composite window. We're going to grab that. And I need to go grab the uh, glass plate. Come on. Oh, so I'm a jetpack one. Don't forget to turn your jetpack off because you will burn your, uh, your components like that. Uh, was I doing glass plates? Picked them up. I unintentionally swapped them out. Okay. Now let's see if. Or, you know, let me do this now. Right. Let's go ahead and put this thing in. Now the question is: is if we put this stuff in our hand while we're standing here. I may have missed it. So you let me do it there. Hey, look at that. Awesome. So if we get close enough here. And now it's not. What is it doing? So we're going to leave this over here and see if it melts. We're going to have that whole thing work. We're going to head out, close the door so that 
That way it will hopefully depressurize over time. That's gone. Let's go ahead and get filtration running here because we don't want the lines to overpressurize. So the particles are the, uh, basically it's an animation to show you that there's air in there, there's some, that there is some form of gas being used. So each of these little boxes right here are actually filtration units that we've put specific filters into. Okay. Everything's turned on? Yeah. Okay. So what it's, do what it should hopefully be doing. is it should. So we're gonna leave you right there for now. There you go. Okay. And we wanna go to here. So we're gonna look and see. Turn you on, turn you on, turn you on, turn you on. And we're going to check the lines here to make sure. Okay, so see, we do have O2 in here. Temperature is obviously going down. So yes, it is working the way I want it to work. 100% H2. CO2. You should not be H2. You should be something other than H2. N2. Okay, that was right. That was right. So it's looking at the inside the room, we are full of hydrogen. Don't light a match. Right. And you have quite a bit in there, actually. Okay, so that worked out pretty well, actually. Okay, so we actually now have a place that we can uh, recycle gases in, which is bloody awesome because of the fact that last time we played, we died of, of asphyxiation. Well, technically, we went to sleep and never woke up, so. Yeah, and it, the game itself is a lot of fun. Um, the art style is nice, but the overall gameplay, you know, like Sharky said, it's a, it's. It is a simple looking game that has a lot of depth to it. And I don't think people really understand exactly just how much depth there is. So to give you an idea, all of the stuff that we have that where you see me running around, turning all this stuff on manually, you can automate all of this. There's actually a full logic system in the game. Soon I can make an Imperial Star Destroyer or rule the galaxy. <laughs> that would be awesome. You can, like I said, you can make ships. Um, it's not anything near with Space Engineer's level of fidelity as for how you can build things. Um, but you can actually make, think of them more as mobile stations than actual ships. So you won't have like X-Wings and TIE Fighters and that kind of stuff. You're, you're gonna have uh, more like a uh, the Star Trek Starbase 001 kind of thing where you'll have something that you use for manufacturing and you travel around in that to to get resources so there is the survival mode which is what we're in there is a um, creative mode which have you know basically like little scenarios and things that happen in there the little events and stuff where it's uh, a little bit more forgiving but then you have multiplayer on both of those so if you host a multiplayer game you can get i want to say four or six people into a single game I haven't done anything with the multiplayer directly yet, and I'm really hoping to be able to do that in the near future. So, now one of the things I do want to do that we haven't done yet is I want to set up a display. <laughs> DLC in the microtransaction system. Sharky, are you still mad about Ark? <laughs> or um, the uh, Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront? Oh, all right. So we're gonna make, let's make a sensor. All right, so we wanna go 
I'm going to gas sensor, so it should be under kit, I think. Now, the chemistry station, um, I kind of glossed over this earlier. In multiplayer, it used to be, well, in single player as well, but in, in the game, it used to be death was the end of your character, right? And if you were in multiplayer, you get these pills, and my character actually has one here, this medical pill. So if I was in multiplayer, if the person I was in the game with died, I can give them this pill and it basically respawns them. In single player, there is now a respawn mechanic that wasn't here last week. It was just went in this week. <laughs> Death Star was a model station. Yeah. It'd be interesting to try and build a Death Star in this game. All right, so we want one of these. Oh, I think I have a display, but I'm going to make another display anyway. So we want a console kit. This is what I like about the fabricators, that you can queue stuff up, turn the fabricator on, and then walk away. And we want a sensor as well. Okay, so that should be everything, I think. So we turn the fabricator on. And it's going to start making our stuff for us. Yeah, so while that's crafting, we're going to go over here. We're going to put some stuff away. Because I, I may need to vent this room because I think we're full of hydrogen and if I need to do any welding in here um, we don't want to weld in a hydrogen rich environment right, so speaking of let me let me check that really quick okay yeah the the, the vent did eventually pull all the hydrogen out of the air that's good okay Yeah, so Space Engineers tends to do one major update a month or so. Um, sometimes it's once every two months, just depending on what they're working on. I haven't heard what the what their big focus is going to be for this one. They've been obviously trying to get the multiplayer stuff much more stable, and they've been making really good progress on it over the last uh, couple of months. So. All right, so what was I doing? I was putting stuff away. Yes. I'm going to put you there put you there I go. and my tool belt is outside okay so since we have all of that now uh, let's go up here we're gonna swap out our tool belts now in order to change out the tool belt what you do is you have to have an open hand if you want to change an item off of your off the bar on the um, left hand side of the screen you press and hold that number and it'll transfer whatever the item is in that slot to the open hand that you have selected. And to change which hand to select it, you use E. If there's something in there that you can do more with, like if you have a power tool, uh, if it's, and then let's say it was in my hand right now, if I hit R, um, it would open the tool up and show me what was in, what components I could take out or change out. So. Hey, look at that. Looks like most of our stuff is done. Okay. And... All right. Actually, uh, I am going to need more cable. I'm a, that's turned off, right? Yeah, okay. It's turned off. Just making sure. All right, so I'm going to see what does it cost to make a cable roll here. Oh, it's the same amount. Okay. All right. So now we don't have to worry about wasting resources because basically what it'll do is it'll only print what you tell it to print. So if you tell it to print five, it'll only print five. Where with these, if you turn it on, it just keeps printing until you turn it off or run out of resource. They're going to change the art style again. And I'm gonna have to check the uh, I'm gonna have to check to see what the developer blog saying because um, I actually like the current art style that they've chosen for the game. 
All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to have... Okay, you know, let's drop... We're going to actually, no, pick you up. And we're going to put you... Can I put... Where can I put you? I can put you... There. And we are going to have you... Uh, where do I want to put you? Okay, so that, we want this to be a gas sensor. And we're going to have it tap in there. And now what this is going to do is I'm actually going to make another one of these eventually. But this allows me to drop ice in here, leave the door closed, and see what gases are in here without having to open the door and go in and analyze it. And grab you. Where did my other coil go? Oh, really? Oh, it's still building. Okay. Let's go say what? There. Okay, so it's done. It kicks out our last coil. Thank you. Turn that off. So we're going to have this go uh, this way, and I think we can get away with, let's close you for a second. So if I go, I might have to run it actually through the wall. Right. First things first, you go in there. We're going to finish that thing off so that it's done and out of the way. You don't annoy me otherwise. Okay. And we can't do anything more with it until we are actually done. Okay, so we do have the... Just making sure. Actually, open the door really quick. So there's 33 in there. Now we want to see that when the sun comes over the window, if that's going to allow us to start melting the ice again. Uh -huh. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, actually, Drop you over there, go here, we'll take that cable out, we're going to switch that cable so that it comes backwards instead. See if we can get this in here. So this is the kind of thing that you can do in this game. And we want you to be a T section that is actually that way. Okay. Uh, let's go here, put this back into our pocket. We're gonna do the little we're gonna do the little cheatsy thing. So yeah, you saw how when it was looking at it, it had the little yellow text under the where it says pickup, where it said it was melting. See, where it says melting. That's what I'm trying to get it to do while it's in here. There you go. All right, so now we need you. We're gonna swap you out, drop you off. Gonna go ahead and grab that. And did we swap it out? Okay. Hey. All right. 
right, so now that we have that done, then should be, oh, I didn't tie in the damn. Hey, it looks like it all melted. That is awesome. Okay, so yes, this is, it does look like it's going to be enough to uh, do what I wanted it to do. So our hydrogen should be ridiculously high. That's 5 kPa, CO2, 29 mole, 96 moles. Look at that. <laughs> that is awesome. Now, we don't want that to go much higher than where it is for pressure right now. So if we do the, actually, let's turn that off because everything does continue to use power if you have batteries. Look at that, pure hydrogen. Yeah, it's pollutants, that's fine. We're not worried about it. 400K in there, 5K there, 1.8K, okay. Um, so this is important because we're eventually going to need these gases to go through the mixer to give us breathable atmosphere or propellant or whatever else we want. So. so Sharky, you're not going to get water in uh, Space Engineers. They have to, for, they've already said in order for them to implement a water, oh, an effective water model, they would have to redo the game. So, and Merrick's not willing to do that. So, unfortunately. And, okay, so the world, the atmosphere in here is clear, so I don't have to worry about blowing myself up when I do this. <laughs> and before you ask, yes, yes, I have. Okay, uh, let's see here. Okay, so that is wired in. Everything over here is wired in. We should be good. I can go ahead and turn that off. Um, we'll leave the regulators on for right now. This one. Okay, so you see that little switch when you turn it on? It tells you have pressure, right? But it's nothing there. So what we're going to do is we have to program this thing. And programming it is actually really easy. The, uh, the little control chip here this little data disk does everything for you oh. okay so what we're looking for is we want the gas sensor if you scroll down that should be the only thing so see how you can see everything in the network this is why a lot of times you'll see people do um, so zero pressure, awesome. So what you'll see a lot of times is people will uh, take these types of systems, if you're gonna put in any type of gauges or readers or anything, and you'll see them put in the APCs, the uh, area power systems. And what that does is it basically acts as a circuit break. So you only see the things on the, um, the output side of the APC. So if I put an APC in here, like right here at this junction area, um, would only see or this module would only see the things from here and up so I'd see the light the uh, the sensor that kind of crap so yeah you're not gonna see it in ME either unfortunately because they're they are effectively built on the same engine it's just a 1.0 2.0 scenario better flight physics. Um, I actually like the flight physics. The one thing that I would like to see them do that they I know they won't do because it would destroy pretty much every build on the, uh, on the workshop and in the game would be the realistic thrust vectoring. Because right now in Space Engineers, all of your thrust is applied against the center of mass, not the location of the, uh, the thrust being applied. There is a mod that will allow you to do it, the realistic flights mod. Um, and very few people use it for that very reason, because it means you actually have to build things balanced. So. So, any. Okay, so, 
we have a fully functioning gas processing chamber, which, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm really surprised worked. <laughs> I didn't think it was gonna work that well. Oh. Now the only thing left to do, and I want to get, I want to do tonight before we call it an evening, is I'm gonna finish our mixing chamber and maybe paint something because I haven't used the paint before. Actually, open you back up. I'm gonna throw you in there. there we go. Now one of the consumables we have over here. Ah. Careful of the pits. You can get stuck in holes. Okay. That's our organics. That's basically our edibles that we don't really use yet. Um, there is farming in this game. So we want blue and green. Okay, so the first one is, is O2, right? Oxygen. Okay, so that's going to be white. Water is going to be blue, obviously. So let's go ahead and we're going to deal with that first. So that way we know that's our water supply. Right. And since we are done with the paint, we're going to go ahead and throw that in there. Now I'm trying to, because what I'm trying to remember are the colors that they're using for each of these. Okay, so they're using the green for oxygen. So we're going to do oxygen green. I was going to do it white, but okay, you know, whatever. Whatever, you know, it works. We're done with the green. And because I, I was really tempted to paint these as well, and I chose not, I decided not to because I'm not gonna use them just for oxygen and nitrogen to make breathable air. And you can breathe just pure oxygen in this game with no real ill effect. So it's just something to keep in mind. I need to set up a circuit for these so that when the sun is not up, it turns the lights on. You don't feel like you're flying a fighter? Well, part of it is because the game is built around now a true six degree of movement. You don't have flight dynamics. So you can you can actually make yourself feel like you're flying uh, just based on how you do your, your thruster um, setups. But there's actually a couple of mods for Space Engineers if you haven't looked into them already. Uh, one of them is the Realistic atmosphere, Atmospheric Flight and Dangerous Reentry, I think. They, they merged two old into one new mod. But that actually has wing mods in it so that if you want to fly and have... Um, aerodynamics in atmosphere, you can have aerodynamics in atmosphere. So, uh, but to do it in space, you kind of have to have a, uh, a system set up specifically for it. Okay, so that's gonna be the volatiles, I think. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think. So let's put that there for a second. Nitrogen is also green, apparently. Alright, so you are... What are you? You are... Doesn't say. Son of... <laughs> Damn it. You're nitrogen. Okay, so I'm thinking... I really think I'm gonna make nitrogen green. Yeah, I think we're gonna do nitrogen green. We'll do nitrogen green, leave hydrogen as the uh, safety yellow here. And we're gonna go like that. Right. 
nitrogen. You are... Which one are you? I forgot which one that one was. Let's see here. Okay, so you're hydrogen. Which are you? You're carbon dioxide. So we'll leave carbon yellow. We'll make hydrogen red. And I don't know what we'll use for that one. All right, so let's do that. Switch that. And we can drop you for a second. Drop you for a second. There we go. There we go. And we're going to paint that one white. So let's go ahead and get the red dropped off in here. Do, 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 do. Hey, Ellis. <laughs> hey, look at that white. Okay. And what I'll do is you can, uh, with the chemistry station, you can actually make more paint. So I'll probably make a chemistry station in the near future. And what we will do is uh, basically paint everything. So I will come back off camera because it's going to be a lot of me just tearing stuff apart and painting it. Uh, let me grab that. I'm going to drop you. I don't want to pick up the canister. I want to paint the canister. Thank you. But I do think we're going to go ahead and make these, but we're going to start wrapping this up for the evening, I think. So I want to thank you all for stopping in. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun hanging out with everybody. Swap those out. There you go. So we're going to make some more piping. And uh, yeah, we're going to call this one here, I think. Let's go ahead and find the pipe kits. We want a kit for pipe, and I don't know, we want like five of those, I think. There you go. All right. So, okay, with that being said, I want to thank you all for stopping in. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out. You can find me here on Twitch. You can also find me over on Twitter. Uh, if you are on Twitter, you can find me over here. If you are over on the YouTube side of the house, you can also find me over on YouTube over here. Now, these streams will get released over into the YouTube side of the house, and anything that we do that's um, live stream based, if we do any behind the scenes video recording, those video recordings will get uploaded over here on Twitch as well. Uh, but you'll find a full archive of everything over on the YouTube side. All right. So with that said, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you all have a fabulous evening. Enjoy your weekend, and uh, we'll see you next time. As always, folks, take care and be safe out there, everybody. Thank you, Sharky. Forgot about that. Thanks, Adenfis. I'll definitely check that out. Um, I'll check that out a little bit later this weekend. Let me take a look at it right now. Let's see here. Wow. Very nice. That is an awesome build, buddy. Holy crap, man. How many hours is that? And I love the greebling on the uh, right in front of the, the bridge area. That is awesome. Very cool. That is it. That is definitely a computer destroying build right there. <laughs> 30 hours? Not bad. A, a creative mood, I'm assuming, right? Not, not <laughs> survival would be awesome, if, but it's an amazing build, even in creative, man. That's crazy. Needs more pistons. No, no more pistons. <laughs> anyway. Thanks for sharing, buddy. I, I appreciate that, man. I hope you all have a fabulous weekend, guys, and we will see you back here next time. <laughs> Take care and be safe out there, everybody.